Coming up on the Talking Mac Podcast, we answer an email from John. MacBook or MacBook Pro? Coming up right here on the Talking Mac Podcast. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Talking Mac Podcast. Hello. We're going to be talking all Macintosh today because we're talking Mac. Hence the title, huh? Whoever named that, which would be me, was really smart. I got an email from John asking, I am looking for an Apple laptop. Do you have any suggestions? Please tell me the differences between the MacBook and the MacBook Pro laptops. John. Well, thank you very much, John. I appreciate the question. You can email us, you can email us your questions at talkingmac at gmail.com. Talkingmac at gmail.com. Okay, so the question, MacBook versus MacBook Pro. Now, it's all, now there's a lot of similarities and there's a lot of considerable amount of differences. Uh, the Mac, they both have screens, they both have keyboards and all of that. So, you know, it's just all apparent, right? Uh, so what's the difference? Well, we're going to tell you the difference and we're gonna, I'm going to tell you what I would. So the MacBook comes with a glossy 13-inch display and that's all you have. That's all the options you have. You cannot choose your options because that's all you have. You're stuck. You have no option. It's just uh, whatever. You know, you don't have a choice. Then that's the MacBook Pro laptops that come with 15-inch or 17-inch models. It comes that matte or glossy display and that is of your... Uh, choice you you choose let's talk about the screens for a second if you're doing 3d rendering 3d editing 3d animation high definition editing or even standard definition video editing at a serious core level you will need a matte display I'm sorry, you just you're just gonna need it because the the colors are far more saturated on a glossy display so what may be maybe light orange on a matte display is Deep orange on a glossy display. That's because of the, the saturation of the color to the eye via the glossy display. So it might, if you, if what, if what you're looking at on your glossy display may look one way. Well, when it comes out on television or on somebody else's computer that's not glossy, well, it's going to look another way. So you want true to life color correction and color saturation. Now, if you're doing casual slideshow viewing and basic video editing on a regular glossy display, it will work fine for you. Uh, just basic computing, it'll work, the MacBook will work fine in terms of the glossy display. Uh, and you got to consider your lightings and your surroundings. I mean, come on. You, here in Atlanta, we have a nice park downtown, Centennial Olympic Park. Well, it's always sunny around there. And there's some shade. So here's what you get. You sit under the tree with your nice MacBook Pro laptop glossy or MacBook glossy. And the sun always comes up on a east around here anyway the sun comes up and you're sitting on the tree and the sun shines through the tree and all you see on your screen is leaves and glare you gotta consider your surroundings if you're gonna be outside a lot you're gonna definitely have to Talking Mac Podcast is proudly sponsored by Tech Radio, weekly technology news podcast. Visit them every week, www.techradio.tk. Again, that's www.techradio.tk. Go with Matt. Now, if you're inside of a home and the light is not facing down on you and not facing directly into the computer itself, uh you'll be okay now since it's a mobile device it's a mobile uh, computer you're gonna be on the move so you gotta consider where you'll be taking the computer uh... let's talk about some stuff that come on the macbooks and macbook pros that are different you have a backlit display and backlit keyboard on the macbook pros laptops discrete graphics card in the, Mac in the macbook pros and i'll get to that in a second sansa rosa chips that in the macbook pros the macbooks do not have those and you get the small, lightweight design and portability uh, of the 13-inch computer in the MacBook. Up to 4 gigabytes of RAM in the MacBook Pro and 2 gigabytes in the cheaper 13-inch MacBook. You get FireWire 800 and Express 34 slot on the MacBook Pro. And you get an included DVI to VGI, VGA I'm sorry, adapter in the NBP MacBook Pro. 
box. Now it may seem minute, but it always helps to save 20 bucks. All right, so let's go back to the discrete graphics card for a second. All right, so imagine here's how here's a good way to think of a discrete graphics card. Let's say I have something I want to keep it discrete. Now, I just, I, just, I want to just stick them. Let's just say a, let's just use a lady for example. She has something that she wants to keep discrete. She just stick it in her purse and forgets about it. She don't want it to bother. She wants it just to be there. She doesn't want it to bother anything. All right, like if I stick a cell phone in my pocket, I want it to be discreet. I don't want it to have to do anything to me. Just stick it in the pocket and forget about it, right? Okay, so the discrete graphics card, it doesn't bother the main unit. It has its own RAM. built. Uh, it has its own RAM. So it's not sucking RAM from the processor RAM and from your system RAM. So it is working there on its own. And I'm sure it can pull RAM from the system RAM if it needs the system RAM pool if it needed to. But imagine it like this. Imagine like I told you to, and it, it's, it's self-contained. Imagine it's self-contained, so it's not really relying on other parts of the system. So you can have a slower computer, but if you have that RAM built into your video card, uh, well, you have faster processing. Then you need better system RAM for your processor so you can speed things up. So that's why it's always good. So you can have your processor to have 2 gigabytes or 4 gigabytes of RAM and uh, 256 megabytes of RAM for your video card. So it... Just imagine it like that. So you 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 really you really can't go wrong with a discrete graphics chip. I I personally would choose the MacBook Pro, John, but it depends on your budget. Well, the MacBooks with a student or a teacher discount, nine hundred ninety nine dollars. MacBook Pros, fifteen inch, seventeen ninety nine for the base MacBook Pro, fifteen inch, and nine ninety nine for the thirteen inch white MacBook. Of course. Two, uh, eighteen hundred dollars and under. Well, that's MacBook, obviously. But if you got two thousand dollars or more, or even less to spend, no less than eighteen hundred, the MacBook Pros are available. They're a perfect option, and I would definitely choose those. I hope to answer your question, John. Remember, you can email us at talkingmac at gmail dot com again. That's talkingmac at gmail dot com. Remember, we produce these episodes every single week. So stay tuned to youtube.com slash talking Mac and you can visit our blog for our show notes at talkingmac.tk again talkingmac.tk talkingmac.tk remember this episode is proudly sponsored by Tech Radio Technology News every single day TechRadio.tk Enjoy the day thanks for listening to episode three of the Talking Mac Podcast. Hope you enjoyed. Remember, send us your email questions and even send us audio questions in email form. You can attach them. We will love to play them during the show. TalkingMac at gmail.com. Enjoy your day.